Welcome back, folks, to Two Bits One Puck. I'm your host, Mr. Intangibles and a Dungeon Master, Dan Masters, with my good friend, the president and founder of the Leon Dryside Old Fan Club, and a man who hasn't bowed down to pressure to go to the pub with his mates in Soho. Well, every human, Will, how you doing? Very well, Dan. Very well. Um, Dungeon Master. Title. Yes, I've, I've decided. Title. For those of you who don't know, I've been um, playing Dungeons and Dragons with my friends after a 20 year oh. hiatus. Decided to, to run a campaign. Dungeons and Dragons Master, then. Not. Not the, uh, not the title formerly vacated by, by a certain Austrian. <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, in theory, he is the world's greatest ever dungeon master, isn't he? Let's I be mean, honest. If... <laughs> this already, I don't know. This just doesn't feel right already. I don't know if we've matured in the last two or three years, but I don't, no. I don't feel as comfortable making flagrant jokes about Joseph Ritzel as I once did. <laughs> So, does that make me a bad guy? I don't know. I don't know. I, that's, do you know what? That's how I've always dealt with tragedy and stuff. I, I just have to find the, the humour in it. That, that's how I've dealt with all the, all the tragedies in my life. Like Even like deeply personal stuff. I had to make jokes about it. That's how I suppress it as a man will, which will inevitably lead to me having a heart attack at 60. Yeah, that's course. fine. That's what we all do. Contrary to what um, Vinnie Jones and, and anyone else representing mind will have you believe, it is in fact very healthy to bottle up your emotions and then let them out in disgusting, sarcastic jokes. That's the, that's the only way that men can and should be able to deal with the, uh, the hard, hard side of life. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so my friend my friend Adam has been running our uh, Dungeons and Dragons campaign for us and I thought well it's a bit unfair that we just play all the time and he has to DM all the time. So I said well I'll I'll do a, a game and then he can play as a character. So I've been I've, I'm kind of doing a uh, running a custom campaign. How uh, how is it going? Are you finished yet? Cuz last week you said you'd gotten sort of the the major plot points, the the big plot beats outlined. But I've been filling in basically now and I've got sort of like the first I've got like at least the first sort of six, seven weeks of them playing. So if we make a start, then I can always at least be that far ahead and not worry too much without having it all sort of ready to go straight away. But they're aware it's a custom campaign, so they don't mind too much either. Yeah, that's that's not bad. And it's like it's like, you know, that age old thing with the teacher, you only need to be one lesson ahead than the students, then then you're in good yeah, stead. Exactly. And like most teachers, I have the answer book right here, so I'll, I'll know everything's fine. I, there's no issues. <laughs> you just you just cheat. Who cares? <laughs> yeah, just cheat. Jesus Christ. D&D and hockey. How did I ever get married? Bloody hell. Good, luckily, they sort of came to you at different points of your life. So it wasn't... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a fantastic point. Speaking of speaking of hockey, well, and very interesting things, labour peace on the horizon. Peace in I, our uh, time. Peace in our time. You uh, you, you seem to rather... Excited by this news? Would you would you care to explain why? Uh, it's because nothing else has happened this week. Uh, okay, yeah. B- besides Lindy Ruff potentially getting fired as the Devils coach, which I would argue is in you know infinitely less exciting than the CBA. And uh, what's not exciting about the CBA? It's the whole, it's the rules that fucking govern this league. It is it is more hockey than hockey itself? Forget boys on the pond with their frozen shit. <laughs> With fucking twigs turned into fucking candy canes. No, it's the CBA. That's what hockey is. It's a fucking 10,000 page bound booklet that says you can do this and you can't do that. I think the front of the CBA document should just say in big bold letters, this is hockey, and that's it. Who can say it? It doesn't. I've never seen the CBA. Good point. I think it's like the Declaration of Independence. No one's actually seen the thing. We think we have. <laughs> You're not allowed because otherwise someone might steal it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think there's there's a few things that I found particularly interesting about this this iteration of this or this potential iteration of the CBA, uh, and because dear listeners, Dan either doesn't know how to read or doesn't want to read, he's asked me to to take some notes, and they are as such. Yeah, put me in both. Yeah, put me in a little column, a little column, <laughs> a little, <laughs> right in the middle of that Venn diagram, right there. <laughs> yeah, can't read, don't want to read. You are you are Jared nineteen. There you go. There's a yes. There's a meme for you kids out there. So so the first thing about these these particularly curious times for uh, collective bargaining in the National Hockey League that really stood out to me is is this only a five year extension to the CBA or a, a addendum or whatever it fucking is because they're changing some things but they're only extending the current 
length of labour peace by five years to the end of the 2025-26 season. Now, traditionally, say the one before was was a 10-year one or an eight, nine-year, whatever it is, this is the shortest CBA we've had since the 2005 lockout, which to me is kind of interesting because I reckon it's, it's blatantly down to the fact that they just want to get Seattle in have everything fine to get Seattle in, get that 30-second team in in, what, 2022 20, or whatever it is. And then once they've got Seattle in, they've got enough owners, they've got another owner to fight against the NHLPA and everything has settled <laughs> down a bit. So then the league can really take the players to task and be like, right, all the balls are in our hand. There's nothing that we have on the horizon that we want to do that you can start scupper. scupper. Whereas at the moment, if, if we've been heading to a lockout when we potentially were expecting to, that really could have in- interfered with getting that 30-second team in. Once the Atlas are in, the owners will hold all the cards. So we could go to another year's knockout where the owners are like, right, we want actually nothing but escrow. You're not getting fucking paid anymore. 100% escrow, 100% at a time. We want, yeah, wh- whatever it might be, you know, you're going to you're gonna play 200 games a year. And yeah, so th- I, think, I think that's an interesting part of it. The other more interesting part of it, which I really should have led with, was the fact that they've combined the return to play negotiations with the CBA negotiations. So to, in order to vote on either the return to play agreement or the new CBA agreement, you have to vote on both. And they're including all 31 teams in that. So the seven teams who huh. aren't even coming back this year are voting on how the league comes back this year. Interesting, but, and, and and that's that's fucking mental to me because obviously the seven teams who are coming back do not give a shit, so that's almost an automatic yes for the the return to play, providing they agree on the CBA rules and outlines, changes, whatever. Which to me stinks of the owners wanting it to be voted on this way, because the owners want to go back to play because Jer- Jeremy Jacobs ain't getting in the bubble. He's not putting his life on the line just to get some fucking hockey in the summer. So they obviously oh, yeah. want the return to play so they can get some revenue. So I reckon the owners have been like, right, if we combine it together, that's a higher percentage, proportion, probability, whatever it is, of us getting both of these things through. This is all adding up to me thinking that this is quite a, a CBA negotiation that really favours the owners, or at least the owners are really in favour of, because there's a really, really interesting point. in. Uh, I'm taking it from the summary that Scott Burnside did for The Athletic. The point in the in the summary. So let me let me let me lay a bit of background on the financial side of it before we get into this really interesting point for me. So the cap's going to stay flat at eighty one and a half million next season. Well, sorry, no, not next season. Yes, next season, but until revenues reach four point eight billion. So that could be this year, next year, could be the year after, could be ten years from now. If we really stagnate, who knows? Could be never. Yeah, exactly. I'd uh, I'd imagine four point eight billion is the equivalent. I haven't done the maths, but I'd imagine it's the equivalent of of the revenue actually matching that cap hit. Because I think they're freezing it at eighty one point five million, and that's a high version of where we should be as far as revenue for the league goes. If that makes sense. Got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I reckon once they want to get back to breaking even before they start thinking about the cap coming back up. So. The, there's also a cap on escrow that they're introducing for the CBA, which has actually been outlined. That's not tied to revenue. So you've got a 20, 20% cap in next season. The season after that is going to be between 14 and 18%. That's going to depend on revenue. And then 10% in the season after that, and then 6% in the final three seasons, which is which is good for the players in theory. But then we get to the really interesting thing for me. So I'll read this verbatim so I don't try and paraphrase and completely miss the point. An escrow debt of 125 million or more, so the players in theory owing the owners 125 million or more based on revenues versus salary cap, at that time would trigger a one-year extension of the CBA. So to me, I'd, I read that as if the owners lose enough money, they the CBA is extended. Which I think is really odd because it's saying that in theory, if the owners are losing money, the whole point of, of the CBA and, and the cap is to have you know, revenue sharing. That's that's the whole you know, 50-50 split and all that. If, 
if it, yeah. if we're triggering a year's extension when the owners lose money, like I I I don't I don't get it. Do you know what I mean? Like that. I'm I'm not like an economics guy in the slightest, but that's just weird to me. Why would you want an extension if it's clearly not working for you? Because there's clearly something on the back end of that extension, isn't there? That's, there's clearly there's clearly something down the road. That's what I'm, after this five years, if it goes to a sixth year, the owners are then going to say, "Yeah, but come on, you know, it was only what was it six percent for the past three years or whatever." So that's that's why now it's got to be fifty three percent. That's that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. So oh, maybe that's it because I don't think there's no mention of the agreed cap on escrow for that potential extension year. Yeah, and that that just really stuck out to me, stuck out to me as like that doesn't make any sense to me and feels extremely shady. Yeah, it's totally shady, isn't it? It's always it's, shady. Of course, it fucking is when you're dealing with. You know, professional swindlers and very successful swindlers at that. Like it's yeah, the best swindlers. Oh, uh, king swindle. <laughs> well, not the best. It's still the NHL, but some of the best. True. You've got a few. Like you've got the some Cronkies the in there. Cronkies a pretty good swindler. Ted Leonsis. Oh yeah. Me and Eugene. Yeah. Right. What else have we got? Big JJ in Boston, obviously. Big JJ, oh, of course. The 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 OG NHL swindler. So they're going to introduce the the cap being calculated on previous two seasons once they hit that 4.8 billion revenue mark rather than just saying right we had x amount of revenue this season just gone therefore next season this will be the cap they're going to calculate it over the last two seasons worth of revenue divided by two which to me is something okay. that should have been here for 20 years or whatever well, that's yeah. no no business is out there running saying like <laughs> like you run a you run a corner shop like oh we did did 20 grand's worth of business today. We better, like, triple our order for tomorrow. Oh, no. no. <laughs> Never mind the fact that we didn't sell anything for four days before that. That's got fucking yeah. nothing to do with it. So that's that's a sensible and fairly straightforward thing that I, that I, I took from it. And then the last thing, which I think is quite important and, and might be a good thing to, to start the discussion off of, is while there are going to be escrow caps for the next however many years... For next season, there is going to be a 10% salary deferral by every single player in the National Hockey League to be returned at a date to be determined. Oh, my God. <laughs> Which, to me, they, our, our Temi Panarin aren't get, isn't getting that $1.125 million back. <laughs> Connor McDavid ain't getting $1.25 million back. <laughs> it's an IOU. <laughs> on oh, a piece mate. of paper it's going to come to that sixth year and they'll be like right so that 10% yeah um, not only are you not getting that back and you also all owe, owe, owe a survivor like, if, if I'm a player and I'm voting on that and the, the other thing I should say this isn't just being voted on by the PA's executive committee which is I believe one representative from each team this is being voted on by all seven, 800 players in the National Hockey League which is yeah, a, I did see that. I did see that mentioned on a, a little article that it was every single player is going to vote on it. Which is good because I could absolutely see <laughs> see the owners trying to sneak it past me. Nah, just have like thirty one. Fuck it, just have ten guys vote on it. Who cares? Yeah, because think about this. There's a there's a really good Chris Rock joke about getting divorced, and he does it about oh the god, this is going to be a, this is going to be a subject. He does it a joke about OJ in his first ever comedy special, and he says, look. I'm not saying he should have killed her, but I understand. Because he said, if you're making $30 million a year and your wife wants 15, all right, you're not broke. But if you make 40,000 a year and your wife wants 20, you might have to kill her. <laughs> and that's like, that's kind of what this is. They have to let all the players vote on it. If you're Cod McDavid and you're making 12 million a year, all right, well, take 1.2 million off me. That's fine. If you're making 700 and they want 70 grand, you're like, no fucking way. I'll be broke. Get as a joke. The fuck out of here. Yeah, no, like it's, that's it. And that's where it's going to really hurt. And I, I doubt we'd ever get the information, but I'd be interested to see the sort of splits for, you know, where do the league minimum guys vote? Where do the, the elite players vote? Where do the old guys vote? Where do the people who have short contracts vote? Yeah, that sort of breakdown would be interesting. Well, you got to think it's going to be the classic thing where the guys who are coming towards the end of their career are just going to be like, yeah, it's fine. Whatever, I won't be here anyway. Who gives a shit? 
Mate, I'm not being funny. Like, Joe Thornton, Zdeno Chara, Patrick Marlowe should not be allowed to vote. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely agree. I absolutely agree. It's, yeah. I mean, they should be allowed to vote in, in you know, general elections and that. And I'm not saying they shouldn't be allowed to do to do that in the wider world. But, yeah. Yeah, but not in CBA. When, when they're about to, you know, perish as NHL players, that's not fucking, that's not acceptable. Dude, that escrow is going to be so high at the end. I think the the players are going to be classed as voluntary workers, aren't they? <laughs> I'm going to be going to be on the fucking dole. They're essentially going to be working in a charity shop. That's what they're going to be. They'll just be those people who work in charity shops doing voluntary work for the rest of their lives. Is it? Is escrow? escrow is going to be so fucking high. Is escrow pre-tax or post-tax? Dude, I've got no, no idea. I couldn't, I couldn't tell you. Because I, mean, yeah, I couldn't tell you. Because imagine, so say you're seven hundred grand geezer. There's a fucking twenty percent escrow next year, so you're giving up hundred and forty grand of your seventy grand. Sorry, of your seven hundred. Not only grand. that, yeah, not only that because there's they have breakdown like they broke they broke down. Oh, what was it on? It was on something when they were talking about agents' wages ages ago, and they showed Taves' contract and how he from that ten million dollars he takes home something like five point one or something like yeah, that yeah, after yeah. everything's taken out of it. And again, all right, I get it. He's not broke, but. Think of the guy who's making seven hundred grand. He ain't making seven hundred grand. He's he's probably making about three ten. That is a serious difference. For yeah, yeah. I I, I think we've said before. Like as as much as we might view these people as I I'm not making anywhere near, yeah, th- you know, three hundred fifty grand a year take home, whatever. And that is an astronomical amount of money to me. They are still closer to us than the billionaires are. And just think think of that applied to that level of not even taxation, your employer changing their mind on what they want to pay you, basically. Yeah, you know, and apply that to do the maths and apply it to your own wage. And I'm sure that's gonna be an, an amount of money that you'd fucking miss. It's it's mad that I can't I can't think of a single sport now where the owners still have all the control. Hockey is the only one I can think of. In every other sport, player power has absolutely taken over. Is it? I, I don't know enough just, about the sorry the the economic side of the other American sports. Is that is it not this way in like the NFL? Did you see how big that contract Patrick Mahomes signed this week? What was the actual cap bit? I know it was like ten years, which is the, the longest contract that's been given out since like Brett Favre or something like that. I don't know what is it. I don't know what the AAV is on the cap hit, but it's big, and it's going to be one of those things where. You know they're going to have to try and build a team around him. You know every, every kind of every season, and hopefully that you know some of those players kind of come through, or they get a good rookie, or that kind of thing. His contract, if everything works out correctly, and all his bonuses are paid, and everything's done, is going to be worth half a billion dollars. Like Mike Sorry. Trout from the Mike Trout, um, not Mike Trout, uh, Bryce Harper went to the Phillies from uh, the Nationals in baseball. Not Nationals, is it Washington Nationals? Uh, is yeah, it? yeah, in baseball. Yeah. And he signed a contract for the Phillies for like three hundred twenty million dollars. Like, look at basketball contracts; they've just exploded because player power is now a thing. Players can now, all right, I get it. It's not the same as football where you can just demand a transfer, but you have players sitting out demanding trades, and in the end, they will get their way. But hockey, it's just it still seems like you know the owners just control ninety five percent of everything, and the players just kind of mope along, going, "Well, I guess this is it. I guess it's how it's always been." Look at when we discuss contracts of the week. And like 10 years ago, the highest paid NHL player was Yaga, and he was making something like a million less than McDavid makes now. Whereas every other sport, the contracts have gone up by about 125, 130 million. Yes. It's crazy. It it is crazy. It's fucking mental. And you're right, that's why we're still stuck on like, oh my God, McDavid signed for $100 million. That's crazy. (laughs) That's mental. (laughs) That's and and I was looking at like uh, NBA contracts the other day. Just out of curiosity, I forget why I got onto it, but yeah, you've got rookies that are making as much as fucking. Yeah, you know, if 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 you were Kevin LeBanc in the uh, in the NBA. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Hey, that contract's aged well, hasn't it? I, th- I think that contract's illegal in the NBA. It's below the oh fucking league god. minimum. Yeah, you might be right. But we haven't spoken about him in a while. But what the fuck is going to happen to Kevin LeBanc next year? <laughs> I have no idea. You know, how many <laughs> points did they have this? Oh, Do you know what? We'll, we'll come to this. We'll come to all this right, in a bit right, later. Right. I've got a kind of a, a bit more of a free skate. You kind of feel to. Yeah. Okay. Let me just write that down because that's that is a really good we, point. We don't want to forget. We don't want to forget that. 
Oh my god. Just take a million, Kev. It'll help us so much this year. Be... Oh my god. <laughs> we'll sort you out later. And then what happens? And then what happens? <laughs> Here comes Eric Carlson with all of your money. Oh dear, Kevin LeBanc. Yeah. God, I forgot about that guy. <laughs> I mean, if, if Patrick Mahomes woke up tomorrow with Con McDavid's money, he'd jump off a fucking cliff. <laughs> he'd be like, I've got, I've got how much? A hundred? Oh, fuck this. It's, it's Con McDavid's money, and he's getting Con McDavid's money because his owner suddenly was like, ah, I didn't make enough money. You have to give me some of yours. <laughs> yeah. You have to give me a lot of yours back. How about no? And, and not only would Patrick Mahomes have Conor McDavid's money, he's also got fucking players like Ryan Reeves and Tom Wilson trying to kill him <laughs> every time he gets on the ice. And he's, and he's having to play with Zach Cassian. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's just, it still baffles me. Absolutely boggles my mind that the players would ever agree to fucking variable salaries. <laughs> it's just mad. It's absolutely mad. It's, it's fucking work with exploitation. We've, I know we've said it before, so I won't hammer it home too much, but like these owners bear zero financial responsibility for owning these teams. You should, you should, your escrow should turn into fucking shares in the team. It should be something. I'd love to know what the, like, the kind of backdoor dealings are for certain players. Like, what else? I know, I know a lot of them will get, you know, if you come and play here, you'll get, obviously, what you get paid, but we'll make sure you get, adver- you know, advertisements and all that kind of thing as well. I'd love to know what some of the extra things are some players get to go to certain places. Well, like, I can't imagine McDavid only gets his salary and that's it. Like, I mean, and I know there's other things, you know, obviously, <clears throat> like I said, he'll do, you know, he'll do adverts and stuff in, around, in and around Edmonton and things like that, and nationally as well. But there must be other things that the Oilers have said, okay, well, we'll give you this as well, but like, don't tell anybody kind of thing. I always think it's funny when you think about adverts in that sort of arena. Because to me, like saying, oh, you know, we'll sweeten your contract by giving you this, this advertising work. No, that's fucking work. As, as much as it's, you know, just fucking sitting in a car talking about Messi and not even trying for it, you're still being paid for that extra job. That's not an extra incentive for being a hockey player for the Edmonton Oilers, for whoever it might be. So the idea of an endorsement as a, as a sweetener never makes sense to me. And I wouldn't, that, yeah, I'd be fine with that. It, it wouldn't bother me that. It's it's what it's like. It's like half a day out of your day. Have you seen? Have you seen that? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Going yeah. up there, fucking Anthony Hopkins in it, are they? No, it's no, like... no, no, not at all. But I, I just think from like a, a sort of black and white standpoint, that is still a fee for work that you were doing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's... but they, obviously they're gonna say like, Connor, can you go advertise fucking clothes pegs for half a million dollars? Yeah, right. <laughs> it's like yeah. you know, two hours work out of your day. Yeah, sure, yeah. I'll do it. But then I, I feel like those endorsements would come these players ways naturally anyway True. So to, to you know to, to fucking sign with the Oilers and be like oh yeah we'll, we'll hook you up with a fucking CCM sponsorship it's like no mate my fucking goal scoring ability is going to hook me up with a CCM sponsorship not fucking you not just because you phoned Dave the rep <laughs> if, <laughs> if you if you start seeing players like fucking <laughs> Ross Johnston getting a CCM like fucking advertising yeah, Rogers is. and there he is naturally it's that time everyone, of the week everyone drink <laughs> there you go mark him off with your bingo cards now but you you know what I mean if you start seeing fucking shit players that you don't even the, the, the Ross Johnsons that we can't even fucking name if I start yeah. showing up in Rogers adverts that's when I'm like okay fair enough that's a that's a you scratch my back I'll scratch yours for, for Con- yeah that's a sweetener for Conor McDavid it should be he goes to the fucking water butt in the changing room, puts his cup underneath, and a fucking gold bar falls out. That's what it should be. That's his incentive. <laughs> it's his sweet. He goes to a vending machine. It's just a can of gold. <laughs> oh, shit. I want a game raid. You know who's getting? You know who's getting under the table dealings, don't you, Kevin LeBanc? For that contract. <laughs> We'll sign you for a million, <laughs> but you're going to get 75 adverts a year <laughs> promoting stuff and we'll pay you a fortune to do it. I bet, I bet he isn't. <laughs> no, yeah, I bet he's not either. I bet he's not either. I bet. They probably lied to him and said it was like some kind of violation or something and it would affect the salary cap, so they couldn't do it. Sorry, Kev Khan. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, mate. You've got no chance. Mate. All right. What? Should we start the show? Yeah, right. Ooh. Go on, man. Okay, okay. Yeah. Go on.
All right, something I quickly wanted to mention before we started on anything else. Why did you change your profile picture on Twitter to the Teflon Don? <laughs> <laughs> and and my name to Willie Chiarelli. And your name to Willie Chiarelli. Well, I'd, shout out to the Teflon Don. Big up, big up. We haven't. Again, he's he's fucking. He's a character that disappeared, and never came back, isn't he? Is he working for the Blues still? Did well, he get, yeah, like taken on some kind of advisory role. Yeah, I think so. But but I mean, as as far as podcast characters go, but, true. But I imagine he's at the public eye now, isn't he? And yeah, yeah, definitely. Imagine in like the, Unfortunately. his heyday, you know, someone coming from the future for a fucking what's his name Barry Barry something the Flash, Barry Bonds. Uh, no, uh, Barry um, Barry Allen. Barry it's Allen. Barry Allen smashing through a cheeky wormhole. He's like, Dan, I have terrible news from the future. <laughs> the Teflon Don hasn't been in the news for at least nine months. <laughs> Peter Chirrell is vanished. Just fucking no, no. But yeah, the the reason I did, I. I don't know how I came across it, but a photo, a lovely photo, dashing photo of him and Milan Lucic, came across my oh, yeah, yeah. came across my my feed. I thought, go on, that's a new that's a new header right there. Was and, it was it History Girl Gem? Yeah, I reckon. Out. I reckon it, was it all must like have on been this day seven years ago or something. I'm sure it was that. I'm sure it was Jen. Abs- Shout out to Jen. Absolutely must have been. Big up Jen. Thank you very much, Jen. So yeah, I, I chucked that on as the uh, as a header. I was like, well, I can't. I can't stop now. And I just I just googled Peter Giorelli in Google Images and this this absolutely dashing photo of the Teflon Don came up. But he, he looks like a, like a psycho. He looks like he's been awake for at least four days. He's got bloodshot <laughs> eyes, he's looking very gaunt and pasty. And he just has a madness in his eyes that says, I'm about to give Milan Lucic six million dollars a year for six years. I'm gonna fucking do it. <laughs> and, and once I had the header and the profile picture, I thought, well, the the name has to come too. Yeah, I've gone this far now. I'm all in. Total, total rebrand. I've been betting all my money on a three and a seven. I must well just carry on at this point. Just fucking have it. <laughs> Why not? I'd, I'd, I'd feel like I'm living my my life as my true self now. The son yeah. that she already never had. <laughs> Still the best picture ever of the Teflon Don is the one where he's like shrugging his shoulders with his oh, arms man. out. Just in a classic, I don't know, face. <laughs> Which I imagine he did a, quite a lot during his time in Edmonton. I don't know what, what to tell you. Does it look like I know what I'm doing? No. How? How did he oversee a Stanley Cup winning team? How is that possible? <laughs> oh. It's insane. How is that possible? The the amount of joy that is flooding into my heart now, remembering everything about the Teflon Don, is... I've got such a smile on my face, <laughs> honest to God. Just, just bringing up the Teflon Don is... Just brought me sort of joy back into my life. <laughs> no, no disrespect to me, and Eugene, but he does not bring me as much happy, happiness as PG or Eddie ever did. No, it's true. <sighs> the thing with the thing with me and Eugene is, you just kind of, it's half disbelief sometimes. Whereas with the Teflon Don, it was just all comedy all the time, and, and there was no subtle undertone of evil with no. PG or Eddie. No, it was just <laughs> grade A buffoonery. <laughs> <laughs> what a guy what a guy he's he's improved my life tenfold yeah it may have been only a short time that we spent together <laughs> <laughs> do you know what he is Peter Chiarelli's like your summer fling the, the one that got away you go on you go on you go on holiday and you have those kind of two weeks together and you think it's going to last forever and it doesn't and you're a bit sad when it goes but then in the end you're just like you know what we had a good time, and that, that's enough for me. <laughs> It'll always be a cherished memory. Yeah. I'm just trying to see if he's... Uh... I feel like we'd have heard I it I can't... If, if, if he'd have been sacked. Yeah. It, would have, it would have come across the TL. I thought they normally have the front office staff um, listed on the team's website. Yeah, but like I said, I think it was a, a role that was kind of way further down. It wasn't just like advisor. It was a, to quote a Seinfeld George Costanza joke. He's the assistant to the traveling secretary, or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> he's the uh, he's the milkman of the of the blues. Do you know what? To be fair, uh, Oilers Nation, March twenty twenty two, Peter Chiarelli breaks his silence. I never saw this. Oh, there's a negative narrative out there, and you can't really rebut on why you did things. The break has given me time to reflect on what I did in, Ed- in Edmonton. The good things, the bad things, and the things I would do differently. <laughs> I'm really, I'm really interested by this now because yeah, I'm looking on, 
on the Blues website and I can't see him anywhere. They've got some proper obscure people on there. But he's not there. Yeah, like they've got all their fucking salespeople listed. Maybe it was just like, maybe he was doing voluntary work there. <laughs> maybe he was ahead of the curve. <laughs> fucking work experience. <laughs> Hall for Larson was a difficult one because we felt we wanted to give breathing room to Conor McDavid and with where the Sallies would go, that's a long walk. I had one offer. In hindsight, I should have waited, but the development of Conor was very important and we felt we had to clear some room for him, both Sally room and room in the dressing room. That's fucking the biggest bit of nonsense I've ever fucking heard. <laughs> what room in the dressing room? And what? Maybe Taylor Hall's too big. <laughs> What? Like, just it wide. Takes up two. I like, st- couldn't fit in his stall properly. <laughs> two stalls, yeah. This Taylor Hall's too big. This this obsession with bringing children into the league and being like, well, if they're good, they have to be the captain. I don't. I don't fucking get it. Like, you cannot tell I me that Conor McDavid, at eighteen years old, nineteen years old, has better leadership experience than fucking whoever was on your team at the time. You know what I mean? No, I agree completely. And if Conor McDavid is that much of a, li- a good leader that he deserves being made captain that young, how is Taylor Hall going to get in that in the way? Yeah, not only that, and if you're if you're so confident of McDavid's sort of leadership skills and maturity, he's not going to care who the captain is because he'll still yeah. go out and play his game and do his thing as he's supposed to do anyway. So it doesn't really matter. Yeah, we 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 don't need a captain. We've got more of a a leadership group. In here, you know, every, everyone's a captain. Oh, there's here. some corporate corporate spiel for you. you got, and that's fucking NHL spiel as well. Like that's a fucking that's as as much a, a catchphrase as getting pucks in deep. Probably more so than now than getting pucks in deep. So it's yeah, that's that's utter bullshit from the Teflon Don. Right <laughs> Do you know there. what? For a second, for a second there, I was just gonna say, I'm just gonna try and defend Chiarelli's trade with Hall. Just check his numbers. Yeah, his numbers are pretty good. <laughs> I've got nothing. What, um, what Adam Larson's? <laughs> yeah. I just in case I was remembering it wrong or something. I, no. Yeah, still bad. Just double checking and yeah, it's still bad. I don't know if you've heard, Dan, but I think one for one. there's there's, one. there's there's part of my brain. I can't be bothered to look it up and I don't know how I would look it up, to be honest, but I think... Didn't Taylor Hall win an MVP after he got traded? He did indeed. He did indeed. I thought so, yeah. Did it, Adam Larson's won like two or three Norris's though, isn't he? Yeah, and a Con Smythe. So and so, of course, of course, of course, and an AHL player of the year, <laughs> and a Vezina and a Jack Adams, <laughs> P- PFA player of the year as well. He was also the uh, Ontario Horseshoe champion. <laughs> he, he in the summer went back to college and and won the Hobie Baker. <laughs> yeah, got a, got a master's degree as well in political science. Fucking utter legend, really, isn't it? Taylor Hall, 2010-11, 42 points in 65. That was his rookie season. Average. Season after, 53 and 61, then 50 and 45, then 80 and 75, then 38 and 53, then 65 and 82. One one slightly down the year to just being a first line forward. And wasn't wasn't that the year Jamie Bin won the Art Ross of like 87 points? Oh, there's a good yeah, maybe. Was it yeah, 2015-16? When look. He, oh, I think it was 14, no, it was 14, 15 that Ben won. I, st- I still think it was in a bit of a scoring lull when nobody was fucking scoring. Ah, no, 15, 16, Patrick Kane, 106. Yeah, that's, that's respectable. Still 62 points. When, when Conor McDavid's taken up all the all the room in the dressing room and on the ice, that's not bad, <laughs> is it? That's not bad, considering. Could be a lot worse. All right, let's fucking move on from the Teflon, Tom. It's too much of a loving. <laughs> do, you, do you know what I thought about earlier? <clears throat> or yesterday, on, I think, that I wanted to talk to you about that is, is not really hockey-related, but it's sports-related. I saw something popped up on, I believe, the BBC Sport website, some sort of British-orientated sports website. It said Manchester United were going to throw all they could at signing Lionel Messi this summer. It got me thinking, Dan, that that sort of headline, you know, best player in the world, you know, X team is, is going to try and sign him, you know, Messi, Ronaldo, whoever it is, it comes around fucking every year, doesn't it? Every year, every six months or whatever. That's a nonsense that we don't actually have in hockey. Like it's you, true. You don't that get every summer at the draft, it's like, oh, the Sabres are going to trade for Conor McDavid. Um, 
No, they fucking aren't. Because like, no, United aren't going to sign Messi. Man City aren't going to sign That's Messi. Not. You know, X, Y, and Z. Probably not even no going to sign. Is. No, no, nobody's going to sign him. Probably not even going to get fucking Gareth Bale, let alone the best player of his generation. And yet, maybe ever, potentially, arguably ever. Depends if you know you've ever seen Cristiano Ronaldo play or not. But <laughs> it's it's such an obsession in football and such a like. I'd, I'd say I'd say naivety, but it's like it's not even naive. Like it's just it's just deluded that we're so fixated on on the idea of the best player in the world moving. That I just find it odd that that's never really replicated in in hockey. I, I wonder what you thought about that. It's, an, it's a really interesting point, is it? Because really, yeah, it wouldn't it wouldn't even be a, a case of at the draft every year X team is going to do this. You never hear in hockey at any time of the year ever, while well, rumours are McDavid's on his way to this team, or rumours are this guy's going here. The only time you hear it is if they're in a contract year. So obviously they're coming up to the end of their contract, if they're going to be UFA. And maybe, you know, maybe they're going to get traded somewhere at the deadline. But if a team, you know, wants to rebuild or something, you'll you'll never hear in the middle, let me think of another, Nathan McKinnon. You, you're never hearing like the middle of McKinnon's contract, why Nathan McKinnon wants to go. And to the New Jersey Devils, and it's not or anything, nothing. It's not even no, never. It's not even the player wanting to go. It's it's teams trying to acquire the player. It's, yeah, you never you never get like oh, rebuilding Devils are going to try and trade for yeah Nathan McKinnon fucking whoever. It's just so so weird. I, the only comparable I could think of was like big name free agents. So, you know, John Tavares. Oh, Drew Doughty might be a free agent at the, the end of the year. Could he go to Toronto? But even then, there's only there's only been two recently, which was Tavares and Panarin. Yeah, exactly. Because I don't believe for one second that he was not going to resign. I didn't believe for one second that Stamkos wasn't going to resign. I mean, I know I, I I've said that we had you know I don't believe at all that Tavares was ever going to go anywhere other than Toronto. The second he knew it was possible, that was it. His mind was made up, in my opinion. I only think mm-hmm. he did what he did to try and assuade the Islanders fans into thinking he had a tough decision to make instead of just going. Yeah, fuck this. See you later. I'm going to Toronto. I'm fucking out of it. But at least you had that thing, and there was the thing with Panarin. But that's it. But in football, it's every every day. If you don't if you don't follow soccer, every single day there is. This is why Man United are going to try and sign Jaden Sancho. This is why Liverpool are going to try and sign this. No, you just you just don't get it in hockey. And every day for every football team in England, there's probably four or five mm-hmm. different headlines. You know, trying to get them to attract four or five different players. Our biggest sports news outlet, or at least has the you know, most famous BBC Sport, has a fucking explicitly titled gossip column. <laughs> like, here's, yeah. here, we're going to round up all the fucking nonsense of the day so you can read through it in bullet point form of, oh yeah, the five or six teams are looking at signing Jaden Sancho. Like, oh, Kai Havertz, is he going to go to Liverpool? I don't know. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's. And, and 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 even comparing it to like the free agency thing, at least with speculating in a year coming up to someone's free agency where they might go, at least that is more rooted in reality than this just nonsense fantasy football shit that we get in soccer. That's true because all all those gossip columns are in football is for men who are down the fucking pub talking to their mates, who then can pretend like they've heard something on the grapevine. Well, I've heard that actually Ronaldo wants to come back to Man United. No, he doesn't. <laughs> he does not at all. And you haven't even well, heard you that. You wouldn't get that. You, you wouldn't get two guys sat in a bar in, I don't know, fucking Ottawa going, Oh, well, have you heard, eh? Oh, Sands are trying to sign this guy. No, you'd never ever get that. That's all it's for. It's just gossip for guys sat in, like men sat in pubs trying to sound smart about footy. And and it's not even like an elitist type thing of like oh you wouldn't get that in my sport eh like it's it, it's just a a fascinating side of of fandom and media reporting on on different sports. But that's a player. Maybe that's a maybe that's what we we're talking about like a player power thing earlier. Maybe certain maybe player X. I don't know. Let me think of Timo. Yeah, Timo Werner is going to Chelsea. Maybe he said to his agent, "Can you put out there that teams are interested in me?" to kind of get this rolling. And his agent's probably gone, yeah, right. And he'll just ring a newspaper and say, well, I've had Liverpool on the phone. So then Chelsea say, oh, shit, Liverpool are after, right, we'd better get him then. 
That's so Rose, you'd never get a hockey player saying to his agent, can you just tell the press that, you know, Colorado are after me? <laughs> like, all right, yeah. That's, it, was, it wasn't happen. That's a really interesting point there because I think that is spot on. Because you get, you get it with coaches, don't you? Like, Elliot Friedman's freely admitted that he will have coaches ask him, and, like, you know, in the media generally, people, coaches ask people, oh, coaches, front office staff, whatever, can you chuck my name out there? on potential yeah. people for this job so that I get a bit of buzz. Like, yeah, when you've got a oh, short, apparently the Devils have shortlisted X, Y, and Z for, for the GM job, there's going to be a fucking X, Y, Z and AA. That extra that extra fucking name is, is going to be a fake one. Do you know what I mean? Just because they want yeah. to get their name in the, in the news cycle. So I think that's interesting because coaches and front office staff have infinitely more power over their own their own employment than players do. That is something that the cap prevents because you might want to go to a certain team, but they just can't fit you in your in their cap. So tough. I don't care if you want to go to Boston. I don't care if you want to go to Toronto. I don't care if you want to go to Detroit. You know, there might be, they just can't afford to fit you into their salary structure. So it's just not going to happen. Whereas in footy, in theory, anybody can go anywhere. If a billionaire buys Northampton Town, they could, in theory, sign anyone they wanted because they would just say, how about we give you seven million quid a week? Yeah, right. I'll play that. It's like China, like Carlos Tevez in China. China, was making, China, what was making, China. Was like, it was like a million dollars a week to play to play football in China because they just had all the money. And we're like, well, we're going to get our league up and running. So we're going to pay all these players to come over for a couple of seasons. And then we'll, you know, they'll hopefully then the league will become more, you know, attractive for the players. Whereas in hockey, you just can't do that. Detroit are in a rebuild, are they? Well, great. They've got eight, one and a half million to spend like everyone else. Good luck with that. And, it, and so, it's not just the yeah. cap as well. It's the the rigid structure of trades. Oh, yeah. So you can't... And, and the fact that, you know, not just the way that, you know, the, the commodity used to exchange for players, it's the fact that teams have the ultimate yes or no. The only, the only power that um, players have when it comes to trades is either requesting that their team pretty please trade them or saying no to a trade. No player can force yeah. a specific trade, not like in, in footy where, say, you've got a release clause. Like, you know, young player's got a £50 million release clause. You, pay, you offer us £50 million, you can just go straight to the player. You know, we are not contractually allowed to say no to that. And there's no equivalent in hockey. So... So yeah, you could you could go to the Oilers and say we will trade you every first round pick from now until the fucking sun explodes, and we will also give you whatever our best player right now. They can just say no. <laughs> no, it's mad, isn't it? It's mad. It's crazy. Mental. Yeah, the mental. A player might even a player might even want to go to a team, but that team would then have to say that's fine. But I've got to move someone else first. I've got to move. Kevin LeBanc's contract before I can do anything else. So, <laughs> good luck. You know, if that works, then fine, we can have you. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you're a, you're a player who wants to leave. Oh, go to GM. Can I? I'm requesting a trade. He's like, oh yeah, that's right, mate. I'll, I'll trade you. Don't worry about that. Uh, John Shaker, what are you saying, bro? <laughs> yeah, like that's it. It's just, it's just a funny thing, isn't it? It's a funny thing. You don't you you rarely think of superstar sports people when you think of labour exploitation it's, it's it's more you know like <laughs> boohoo playing paying their fucking seamsters and seamstresses three pound fifty an hour in Leicester that's yeah. the, the real victims the real victim as always is Conor McDavid and his sad face t-shirt okay we're on Spotify iTunes Stitcher Google Podcasts YouTube and spreading the diseases all over around Soho if you could leave a five star review on iTunes or every review where you listen that would be really good as always, we're brought to you and sponsored by Jason and his team at Wave Intel. The season is getting closer by the week, but even if, even if we don't get there, Wave Intel provides you with up-to-the-minute data on player and team comparisons. This helps you because, let's be honest, it's always good when you feel smarter than your friends. Wave Intel, online and on Twitter, being smart so you don't have to. Before we get on to Lindy Ruff, let's quickly see how Kevin LeBanc played this season because I'm really intrigued. Let's touch in on Because I don't know how many points he had. Well, while you're checking it out, I just want to... Mention how you know when when he signed that contract, it was like oh, 
yeah, obviously that's that's a bad thing for him to do. And everyone joked, like, oh, I imagine if he bombs, if he has like an eight point season, he gets injured, whatever, and, and he really stuffs it up. Can we just take a, a moment to appreciate the fact that Kevin LeBanc signed this good faith one year, one million dollar contract, and then 2020 fucking happened? <laughs> Like, of all the possible outcomes that would have been extremely bad for Kevin LeBanc, fucking COVID-19 decimating the population at large and the NHL's plans for its season. It's, I, I don't want to say poetic because obviously people fucking died, but a little bit poetic. Christian Jelic of the uh, Milwaukee Brewers in the uh, in MLB okay. signed his contract the day before the season got shut down. And it was something it's something like seven years, two hundred and seventy eight million dollars or something like that. And he and I'm sure he had to send out a tweet or an Instagram or something saying, Oh, that was lucky. <laughs> like, no shit. Under the fucking wire. <laughs> Under the wire. Without have you looked at Kevin LeBanc's points this season, Will? I haven't no, I, I haven't. I, okay, okay. So last season he had fifty six points in eighty two games. Everyone kind of agreed he was like a bit of a... Uh, he was one of those hidden gems for the Sharks last year. 70 games. Will, how many points did he have this year? <sighs> I think... Did he have like 35? Oh, mate. Not bad. 33. 33. Oh, mate. It wasn't, it wasn't going well to start with. <laughs> I mean, he could, have hit, he could have hit 40, but... Man, if he'd have, if he'd have t- signed this deal last season, then if it- obviously... It's you know it's, with a, with a team that was going to give him more than that. It's one of those things that that that's it as well. The fact that he was in San Jose really dictated how much he got screwed over because there have been plenty of players who had you know a good season and then sign an immense contract. Like if, if I'm Kevin the Bank and I'm I'm rocking up at an AHLPA meeting and I bump into Jeff Skinner, but probably just deck him. <laughs> you, you 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 probably just punch him in the face, didn't you? It's not Jeff Skinner's fault. What's he supposed He's to fucking... not sign the contract? Yeah, but you can't. What's Jeff Skinner? What's Jeff Skinner supposed to do on, on when he comes to co- sign his contract? Is there any money in here for Kevin LeBanc? Because I will not sign it if there isn't. Like I'm... Kevin deserves a bit of this money. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm going on. Hunger. That's not my fault. I'm on hunger strike until sure? Kevin LeBanc gets paid. Yeah, That's what you should I'm have done. Hunger strike until Kevin LeBanc gets twenty percent of my wages. Pro- problem is, though, when's Kevin LeBanc going to bump into Terry Pagula? A good point. A good point. It's it's just like the disrespect of. <laughs> Of Jeff Skinner showing his face at an NHLPA meeting when he knows that <laughs> he's he's done nothing to earn, uh, you know, done nothing to deserve earning nine times as much as Kevin LeBanc does. Shit, as I've said a million times, this is one of the worst stats, and I hate the plus minus unless it's for comedy reasons. Thirty three points minus thirty three. <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> by by my maths, Dan, that means he was on the ice for a sixty six goal against. Yeah, fantastic. Come on, mate, that's fucking that's almost a goal every game. Kevin LeBanc. Poor Kevin. Poor. poor I'd say poor enough, Kevin, but he's gonna fucking need it. So keep it. Send it in a bottle to address in in bio. There's a guy. There's a guy who's ticking X in the fuck this CBA box <laughs> with his million dollars getting shaved down to like five hundred and twenty grand. Fuck you know. What's what's twenty percent escrow when you're only getting twenty percent of a paycheck? <laughs> he's he's going to be on a fucking PTO next year, isn't he? How how far into the season can you be on a PTO for? <laughs> God Almighty. <laughs> <laughs> he must have fired his agent. He must have fired his agent like halfway through this season. Oh, what the fuck? I was thinking earlier as well. Like, what's that fucking agent doing signing that contract? I know. I know. <laughs> like fifteen percent, like or hundred and fifty grand. Nah, you're all right, mate. It's <laughs> not worth getting out of bed for. Oh. Dear me. I'd love to know what offers he had last season. I would. I would love to know what offers, like, if any offers had come their way last season. But... Well, like off sheets to to the bank. Yeah, or I said this a million times. I don't believe that n- people aren't talking. If a team had said to his agent, "Okay, if we can get him over here, you know, we'll we'll give him this much," kind of thing. Yeah, because it. I can, you know, I I'm sure teams would have thrown four or five million at him. Easy. Yeah, definitely. He he would have got five by five. No, if he was a free agent last year, fucking hell, he'd have gotten six million. Yeah, he was like he was like the secret kind of hotness in the streets. It was like, oh shit, yeah, Kevin LeBanc, you know, Ooh. what a fucking player he is. You know, don't sleep on Kevin LeBanc. Like putting up numbers. 
And it's it's, and then, it's not even like he's suddenly been an apparition. I still think Kevin LeBanc is a good player. It's just support. that is fucking unlucky. Per- perfectly balanced for every Vili Leno. There's a Kevin LeBanc. <laughs> for every uh, every Milan Lucic, there's a Kevin LeBanc. Poor guy. So news broke just before we uh, came on the show. Lindy Ruff is the next head coach of the Devils. Uh, had been working as assistant to the Rangers and in a world where Gerard Gallant and Peter Lavi let us out of work this seems really weird to me Will what do you think? So so it's a hard one with Lindy Ruff because he he was stars manager manager coach for a few years and when he's got the horses and if he's got a goaltender which which both questions are yet to be answered in New Jersey his his system can work and at the very least is fun to watch. So if, I, if I'm a Devils fan, I'd rather have fucking Lindy Ruff than, than fucking Ken Hitchcock or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, at least yeah, you, you're going to be playing relatively interesting hockey and it could work with the like, you know, they've got high skill players. You've got Nico Hishi, you've got Jack Hughes, you've got uh, Nikita Gusev, Jesper Bratt, etc, etc. Like, in theory, it could work. But yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Like, can, you cannot tell me that Lindy Ruff's the best candidate. Or it's a question of they inquired with the likes of Laviolette and Gerard Grant and they just laughed and then hung up the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Look what I also thought maybe, was it a case that they spoke to Laviolette and spoke to Gallant and said, what would you do? And they said, well, it's going to take three or four seasons to get this team turned around. Mm-hmm. Whereas Lindy Ruff said, "Yeah, give me a year out of it. I'll have you back. You know where you should be." And they've gone, "Oh yeah, thank God for that." Or, or is is finance another thing of it? Like you know, oh, Lavi and Galan yeah, are going to command five million or whatever it is. Ruff's come in and said, "Yeah, I'll do it for one and a half." And you, you're taking your chances. Like, yeah, if it works with Ruff, it can work. He he coached that Stars team in fifteen sixteen to a to a conference best and like you know playing some beautiful hockey while they were doing it. So like, and and he's he's had success with the Sabres in the past. Like Lindy Ruff has, is is on paper not he's not a bad coach. He's not fucking John Hines. But yeah, I reckon I think there's more to it than them just choosing Ruff because they think he's a better coach than Gallant or Laviolette or Babcock or any of the other options out there. And the good news is as well, his name does lend itself to fantastic puns depending on how things go in New Jersey. So I don't, I, I don't know what you mean. I won't bother you with any then. No, please, please don't. I don't want my my ears or my <laughs> mind tainted by any rough based puns. We'd have a rough time of it. I mean, if, you know, hopefully things work out. Then you can take the rough with a smooth, can't you? It's fine. But like you know, we're not going to do any though because that'd just be cheap. That 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 really would really would. Should we should we insert, <laughs> should we insert a ticking sound for our brains just that mm. rough. Into rough. No, I'm just I'm, I'm just looking at some I was just checking. I am nowadays trying to curtail my this is a terrible decision after the whole Craig Baruby thing. So I'm now <laughs> I'm now kind of saying, that's a weird interesting choice, isn't it? Rather than saying, What the fuck are they thinking? Because <laughs> I just know after the devils win the cup next year, I'll be going, Oh yeah, I'll look like an idiot again. Go eight eighty eighty two and one in, in Brett Ritchie terms. Yep. And uh yeah, just absolutely <laughs> smash the arse off it. Yeah, they go 16 0 in postseason. I did mention to Will that, uh, what's with it being a quiet week? If you've got any kind of hot takes or crazy theories or anything like that rattling around in your head that we never seem to get to, we should throw out a couple on the show this week. How did you uh, How did you go through this and what was the idea? I'd, uh, I've got a couple that I'm, I'm flying around with, but I've, I've really struggled with it because I was using all my takery on the, uh, on the CBA processing. So maybe we can do something where um where your takes are audited by myself. The the, the first one that yeah, really yeah, I go on, go on, I go did on. say to all that I've got two absolute. I did say to all that I've got two absolute fireballs of takes. I reckon I reckon I'll do. It. I've I've got. I don't want to call it a hot take, but I've got something that I wanted to talk about about the return to play. That I don't. It's an opinion. I don't. I don't want to go as far as to call it a hot take, but a theory. Go on then. You got the you got the right. So we got the we we're gonna provide this all agreed tomorrow on Friday. There's gonna be the round robin playing round for, for the yeah. the seeding 
to decide the seating. And I reckon that could potentially work in the fans' favour where we end up with some interesting matchups, just because like these teams are not going to fucking try. This is going to be an extension of the exhibition period. What sort of nutter is going to go out there and strain his ass off, end up fucking blowing his knee out or whatever in the round robin for a playoffs that you're already qualified for? It's true. It's not. It's not going to fucking happen. So I reckon you could get some We've weird. Seen weird. The, the Premier League's the Premier League's come back, and a ton of players are already injured. Yeah. A lot of players have got injured. Way more like average wise than would normally. Because they've been sitting around eating Mackey D's on the beers, just as hockey players will have been. Like, yeah. And you just suddenly, even if you're not doing that, even if you're living a relatively clean lifestyle and you're working out or whatever, working out's not the same as playing a hockey game. And to go yeah. from from being right in it to not being in it. And I think it's, it's even just little things like <laughs> you are going to go into rest and recovery mode because because you can and because you need to. So it's it's no different to coming back to the start of a season. Just because it's been a short off season doesn't mean that mentally and physically when they come back it's going to be any different to coming back in September. Yeah, because yeah, but in September you kind of you can, you can almost throw away the first two weeks. It doesn't really matter, does it? Yeah. Because it's not the end of the world if you lose like four or five games in those first two weeks. It doesn't really matter. You don't have to try that hard. Just kind of get your win back. Get yourself kind of back in the groove. Yeah, okay, no worries. Yeah, exactly. Whereas now it's straight into it. You like don't you know we we can't lose. Like we have to win every game straight away. <laughs> You've got uh, there's no there's no sixty percent games in the fucking playoffs. I'm, I'm buzzing. The, I'm the, buzzing the for first this. One, I'll do okay. I, I had three things. I'll do my two fireball takes last. The first thing I heard, which I'd never heard this before, is that the Molson family has a self-imposed trade embargo with the Penguins. Have you heard that before? That's what the Canadians and the Penguins cannot trade. But the Molson family do not like they don't like trading with the Penguins, aside from a couple of swap deals and a couple of like minor league bits. Was they it? do not like to trade with the Penguins. There's background to this, which I I only read this today and I'd never heard this before. The idea was was that back in the day the Molson family would give tickets to certain players. Because obviously the Canadians were huge at the time, and a lot of the Guy Lafleur and you know that generation were a lot of people's favourite players growing up in the Canadian market. So the idea was, was the Molson family would give these like tickets, like glass tickets, the tickets on the glass to like midget players. So they like, look, one day you could play on the same ice as Guy Lafleur. Like, look at you know it's it's awesome. One of those players was Marilyn Lemieux. And the Canadians have been scouting Lemieux for absolutely ages on the advice of the coach at the time, uh, Claude Ruel. And they, they, you know, everyone said like, yeah, this guy's going to be unbelievable. The problem was, was that obviously for Canadians to get Lemieux, they'd have to be crap. And then, you know, steam him with that first overall pick. Mm. The Hartford Whalers at the time were terrible. I think they made the playoffs once. Since they joined the NHL, I think, from the WHA, they'd made the playoff once or twice. And they were like the bottom feeder all the time. So it, was, it seemed likely that they were going to get Lemieux. So what happened was the Canadians did a trade with the Whalers and picked up the Whalers' first overall pick. Oh, yes, 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 I remember this. Okay. The problem was, though, of course, was that the Whalers, while bad were not as bad as the Penguins. Then the Canadians went to the Penguins because obviously they wanted Lemieux, who was going to be obviously like, you know, the French-Canadian absolute fucking wonder megastar all time all my life. And the Penguins basically just laughed them off because what the Canadians offered them, the Penguins said was, you know, like, it's, you're basically trying to rub us blind. You can forget it. And in no uncertain terms made it clear, like, we will not deal with you. Like, you know, there's no way you're having Lemieux. Yeah, do and not call this number the again. family have held a grudge. I just, uh, <laughs> I don't, Isn't that amazing? I, I want to say that's fair enough, but it, like, what, what are you talking about? Like, oh, we we want to trade you for a for a guaranteed superstar, the best player since Wayne Gretzky, and and now we're annoyed because you said no. <laughs> yeah, but that's petty. That's petty billionaire billionaires for you, isn't it? They want what they want, and if they can't get it, they're going to kick the toys out of the <laughs> Nobody <laughs> says no to fucking Jeff Wilson Senior, whoever it was at the time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's... If it was the Wild West, he'd be like, no one says no to the Molsons. Do you understand who I am? I run this town, see? <laughs> <laughs> and 
and it's, I, was, I love that story though that, that, I don't that's beautiful because I was trying to think because Galchenyuk went to Arizona before he went to the Penguins didn't he that's oh that is just incredible Oh. And I am absolutely here for Molson's pettiness. I'm absolutely here for it. I love that. I love that. I can't get what I want. Well, fuck you. <laughs> I love it. I think it's fantastic. <laughs> uh, Mr. Bergevin, I've got Jim Rutherford on line one. He's saying he wants to trade Sidney Crosby for a third round pick and he's going to eat half his cap. <sighs> Alas, <laughs> I'm not allowed to take that phone call. Yeah. If, if I was in the Penguins and I knew that, I would fucking leave messages like that every single week. <laughs> Malkin for a cup of tea. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Go, yeah, we want Carl Isles now. We'll offer you we'll offer you fucking Jake Gensel for him. <laughs> yeah. We'll take Sidney Crosby with some of that beautiful Canadian ice and one of those fantastic ponds you have. <laughs> no, <laughs> can't do it. I love that. That's incredible. And it's, I've never not heard that before. It's not even like like fucking Mario's the owner now. It's not it's not even like an owner thing. It's not like Jeremy Jacobs, where he's still in yeah, control. But think about it though. Think about it though. That's even worse. Yeah, I know. Just think about think about if Mario had gone to the Canadians, done all the stuff he'd done, and then was in like a massive front office position. So people had like so players would say, "Oh my god, I could go and play for Mario Lemieux." Like, <laughs> oh my god, like the Wonder Molson's fucking furious. Yeah, but <laughs> I'd be more furious. But it, it it wasn't Mario who. It's not like Mario said no. Don't trade that pick. Like it's not like um. And she wasn't going to report. Like a lot of people forget that fucking Lemieux almost did a Lindros. Oh, I know. Yeah, because he, he was almost like, no, nah, allow that. I'm not going to fucking Pittsburgh and shit. So, like, for for Jeff Molson. Jeff Mol- maybe to... that's why. Maybe that's why. Maybe in the back of his mind, he's like, yeah, I want to, I want to, you know, I watched Gila Fleur play on that ice that time. And yeah, I'd, I'd imagine it was. Know, I'd, I'd... So, so it, it makes the it makes the pettiness from the Molson family even sweeter. Because it's not a pettiness against a person who has wronged them. It's a pettiness against a fucking logo. It's like, <laughs> I love it. Fuck that oh fucking pig. Like Jeff Molson's at the fucking zoo. They're like lobbing stones at penguins in the fucking enclosures. <laughs> like, fuck you. How dare you. <laughs> For all the people there know that he's allowed to, he's allowed to do that. Oh, because they know. It's, it's why he bought the zoo in fine. the first place. Yeah, he's allowed to throw things at the penguins. Do you not know what happened with Mario Lemieux? Come on, get up to speed. Come on, mate. I can't. I can't tell you. I'll start crying. <laughs> it's too. It's too heartbreaking. It gets me so upset. It's too heartbreaking. We could have had Mario. Oh, forget it. Forget it. <laughs> Let's move on. All right. Okay. Here's my two fireball takes. Well, oh, no, oh, don't. Ones, I'm not sure. Don't walk them back now. Oh. Sorry. Sorry. Do you know what? No. 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 All right. Here we go. Bearing in mind, this is a hot take, and a real hot take should be based off nothing. <laughs> Otherwise, it's not a hot take. If you start trying to back up things with numbers or statistics or data, that's not a hot take. You're just doing research and then proving your point with research. You've, but you've got a well formulated is, idea there. <laughs> yeah, I, th- I think that's I think that's a good definition for a hot. You can't research a hot take. That's stupid. How is that a hot take? All right, Eric Carlson is done. And the Sens have won that trade forever. He's can, never, ever getting back to his levels, ever. I can't disagree. I can't disagree. How how many times has a man with one foot been any good in the National Hockey League? Apart from <laughs> Gregory Campbell for that one shift in 2011. <laughs> <laughs> Which was amazing, but yeah. I thought, yeah, I, that, that, that is hot. To say. So, what level of done are we talking? Because I think that dictates the heat of this take. Yeah, how how are we saying levels of done? Uh, like, I mean, his levels of done are not the same as say, I don't know, Mark Edward Vlasic's levels of done. Like they're both like, if you're looking at their peak, Vlasic was very good, but Carlson was Carlson. Like, do, do you think he'll last the length of this contract that he's on? No. I think he'll get bought out at some point. Ooh. Maybe down the road, but I think he will. And how can I how can I quantify it? I don't think he's because but then even the Norris doesn't really count for defenseman because he's just whoever's bloody turn it is. That's not even a measuring stick, is it? He's not gonna get talked about as a top, you know, a top tier defenseman. Ever again. That's my that's my that's my 
fiery sake. I think I think that's, that's the best way I can quantify it. Yeah, I, I, I know. You, like he's yeah, I know what you mean. He's not going to be Eric Carlson anymore. He's going to be fucking Nick Letty. He's going to be whoever. I think yeah. I think he's going to be he's going to be good, but he's not going to be. You know, he's not, he's not even going to be really good. He's just going to be yeah. He's good. He's a good player. But when you say to somebody, you know, give me sort of like you know your top seven eight D men. He's not going to be on it. Like he, he might be on one person's list, and that's it. Like no he'll he'll never even get a single Doris vote ever again. I don't know if I'd go that far because names still carry something. Kerry Price is still apparently the best goalie in the league. Yeah, yeah that's so, true. Like names do still carry something. So that's what I mean. Like, you couldn't really quantify it on the Norris because everyone's just going to go Norris, Norris. Oh yeah, Carlson. He's a defenseman. Why not? Because they'll just do that because that's what happens. Yeah, but I, I reckon he could. I reckon he could be that bad though. I mean, he might get that bad because he's he's not been he's not been good this year, or at least not been Eric Carlson looking good. No, and I, I I just think his I think this his constant nagging injuries are just too much. I think there's something there that it's just like this is a problem that he will never ever be able to fix, and it will just cost him that little extra edge he had. Okay, he had he had forty and fifty six, so it's not the worst. But yeah, he's he's on the way out, isn't he? That's what I think. Again, spicy take. I like it. I like it. I, I think I agree with it. Okay, well, that's right. Then. It's, that's right. Then. It's especially I'll, I'll take that. Especially the the my one last thing, like the side of the Sens having won the trade. I think if they come out, if they come out of this draft with with a couple of good things, we we'll um we'll see something good there. Which is which is speaking of the draft. Here's one for you. It might it might be a bit a bit vague and a bit a bit. Uh, a bit too wide, wide cast a net, but I reckon okay. in that top five of whoever's selected in the top five by mystery team yeah. LA, Ottawa, Detroit, and LA, Ottawa, there's gonna sorry, yeah, not Ottawa, there's gonna be a true bust like proper busty McBusterson fucking like on on those all time lists. I mean, I'm like. I'd say, yeah, Yakupov level, maybe even worse than Yakupov, is what I'm thinking. Because Yakupov played a few years in the league, and I think if Yakupov was Canadian, he'd still be in the league. <laughs> yeah, but for first overall. Oh, yeah. Oh, than, dear. He played a couple of years. <laughs> what would you want? <laughs> yeah, all right. That, that like level. 12 year career with a, cup, with a couple of cups. That level of bust within the top five. Like, I'm, I'm talking, you might even get someone slated so at third overall who never fucking plays. I do like that. I, I, and I agree with. To be fair, I agree with that. I, I just feel it. I just feel it in my bones. It just, but then, is, are we just? Are we just? Are the, are that is that take just playing the odds? Because what are the chances that those top five players all end up being really, really, really good? Yeah, that, not just he was good. That's what, what I mean. That's what I'm talking proper bust though. Because like, if you pick someone at even even second overall, oh, okay, yeah, good point. And they and they turn into like a fifty point player. That's. Yeah, they're not a superstar, but they're still fucking good. Like if you pick someone at fourth overall and they turn into a second line, you know, middle six option, that's still good. That's like expected to an extent. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking fucking see you later on on the list of yeah. of top ten busts of all time, sort of thing. On five years, they're on a they're on a, uh, a TSN. Hey, this is the top ten NHL busts in history, <laughs> and they're like number seven or something. Yeah. And, and I want I'll, remember Alexis Lafreniere. That's that's what I'm saying. <laughs> People in after mobilist do certainly do because he's currently playing in the KHL. I feel like it could be Lafreniere, based on absolutely nothing. But I feel like Lafreniere could you know fucking what? bust. I, di- I disagree on that. I disagree on that. Yeah, I think he's. If you, if you want to argue with me that Alexis Lafreniere is not going to be a 120 point player every season, I I, I do agree with that. Do I think he's going to be? the best player in the league? Probably not. But I think like you said, he is ready to go plug in and play right now. He'll be fine. And and that's what would but, make his bust even sweeter. Even sweeter. <laughs> every every first you fucking poor kid. You're like, I hope he fails miserably. Oh, I fucking hope, I hope he does. <laughs> I really, really if I could influence it in any way that <laughs> secures this poor eighteen year old <laughs> child <laughs> to become a, a laughing stock of a nation. <laughs> I just, I just think that, that there's never been a first overall pick that you know he's going to be a bust before he's picked. 
Do you know what I mean? Like every, everybody goes in like, oh yeah, he's going to be really good. He's going to go first overall. He's ready for the league right now. That's why they're the first overall pick. But you still get first overalls at bust. Do you know what I like? Yeah, I like you thinking there, actually. I just, what, what, I like you thinking. Why not? If you're right, that's the fucking mother of all predictions, <sighs> isn't it? Hit me with it. Put me down for it. The friend is the bust. Let's be honest, and I'm not sure if you know this, people, but we are pretty fucking good at predicting these kinds of things. We did predict the Blues would win the Cup in February <laughs> when they won the Cup. So, just saying. It's, I did predict, true. jokingly, on a tweet, that the salary cap would stay exactly the same next season. <laughs> Guess who's right? <laughs> if you say How I got there is irrelevant. Even, you know, the greatest proof that even the stupidest clocks can tell the time every now and again. Yeah, a broken clock is right at least twice a day, so... I'll take but it. I'd, I'd, I'd say beyond broken. Like if you, it's like throwing shit against the wall and and, and it turning into the fucking Mona Lisa. Or you know, the, what, <laughs> if you had enough monkeys with enough typewriters and enough time, they would write Shakespeare eventually. Like if you gave enough monkeys enough typewriters and enough time, they would type out Alexis Lafreniere <laughs> will be a bust. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's what's that's what what's happened this evening. Yeah. This shit thrown monkey. I like type it because up. obviously being English gives us a little bit of leeway, and that. People listening, if we're wrong, will go, fucking English, what do they know? But then if we're right, oh my God, these two English dudes predicted he was going to be terrible. How did they ever manage that? I'd, I'd, I'd hope that if he does bust, we'd get a, you know, a call to come on TSN or whatever and just have a little chat. Yeah, and explain our reasoning why. All right, we'll finish We'll finish the show on this because this might... Uh... <laughs> well, you're, you're, right, you're, you're just going to say the take and then we'll cut to black. Soprano style. <laughs> Just a small town girl. Fade to black. I think Marty Brodo is a bit overrated. I, d- I can't disagree. And and I, Shit, I, no way, no way. I can't do it. To, like fucking, who cares? If whether he's underrated or overrated, who cares about fucking goalies? Nobody. Don't. No offense, Paul. But <laughs> shout out to Paul. Shout, shout out to, to Paul. Paul Campbell, the official goalie expert of Tuber. <laughs> no offense, mate, but. You can't. You, know, you can't he tell. Plays me. Behind, he plays behind Stevens, Niedermeyer, the fucking trap. And I'm not saying he's not good. Clearly, he was very good. He's not. He's not the best goalie ever. But, well, no, clearly not. But I'm saying, like, even in regards to like Hashek and Wah, Brodo is nowhere near. Yeah. Those for me, like nowhere near. Not even he's not as good as them. He's nowhere near them. That's that's your one too, and that's even even without. So that that puts Brodo as third for me. And that's without even considering, like, you know, your old schoolers, like, you know, your Ken Dryden's, your fucking Georgie Vezina. I don't know if you've heard of him. Um, yeah, fucking Bernie Perrant, who, whoever you want from from the past. Braden Holby, if he was on a more dominant team. Like, if if, if you send Braden Holby back in time, chuck him on the Devils, Devils teams, team. are we talking about, oh, Braden Holby, best player that's ever fucking, best goal that's ever lived? Yeah, I, th- I think I think we would be. And, and I don't. And I don't believe. I don't believe that people that ever put Brodo over Hashek. I never see anybody do that. Oh, you, that happens. You know. Happens all the fucking time. Really? All the time. Like, yeah, yeah. I, 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 really I, don't, I really don't see it much. I definitely heard of Brodo as the best goalie ever before I heard of fucking Dominic Hashek. All right, fair enough then. <laughs> well, you people are wrong. So there you go. Whoever, whoever told me that, <laughs> fuck you. Yeah, whoever says that, you're clearly wrong. But yeah, I agree. I think you put any. Semi competent goalie, not obviously not you know any any good goalie. Yeah, behind that I, was say, I, I wouldn't go out. They'd be posting like, damn near same numbers. God forbid if you sent Kerry Price back there. Fucking hell, what sort of conversations would be would we be having? Yeah, but we wouldn't need to because Kerry Price is obviously the best goalie now, so it's fine. That's the thing. <laughs> we, we don't need to send him back. Be, He's already the best goalie. We'd be questioning whether he was the second coming of Jesus, and we didn't even notice it. That is true. Yeah, that's true. Did Jesus come back and decide, actually, I'll, I'll play a bit of puck? Jesus, Gandhi, Price. That order. <laughs> Gandhi. Gandhi. Mahatma Gandhi. <laughs> yeah, we you know people that, are like, that... was like, oh, Gandhi. He was like the leader of peace. And, oh, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Like, shit, dude. You ever read about Gandhi? Like, damn. <laughs> Holy shit. He's <laughs> Gary Price. The, the Gandhi of the NHL. <laughs> 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 allegedly allegedly this is what happens when there's nothing to talk oh, about in the league get, get fucking these, dangerous get, these holes. get really pleased as, as much as I don't want anyone to 
to die. Like, I, I don't want Johnny Gaudreau to get COVID and die. I do want the NHL to come back just to, to save our fucking small reputations on the internet before we say something truly outlandish and get fucking cancelled. <laughs> oh, bloody hell. All right, then. Let's get out of here. All right. <laughs> Quickly. We're done. We've done Thank enough damage. Listening. You've done enough damage. Thank you for listening, everybody. Will, any last words? Absolutely not. I'm not I'm not messing around with that. Yeah, I better go. I can hear the sirens. See you next week, everybody, hopefully. Peace. <laughs>